Hi, everybody. Welcome to Virtual Artisan Market, or as we like to call it, VAM. VAM is a modern twist on your everyday favorite artisan market. Each week, we bring to you, in the comfort, convenience, and safety of your home, a curated group of highly talented artisans. Now, you're probably looking at me and saying, like, who's this girl? Well, actually, Heather, your hostess, is out of town, and I have... Uh, offered to, with my arm twisted behind my back, to host the show. So uh, please be kind. As uh, Betty Davis once said, fasten your seat belts, it might be a bumpy ride. Let me set the stage for what you're about to experience. Uh, this morning, we're gonna introduce to you some great, amazing artisans. You will learn about their inspiration behind their creations, and in even some cases, get to join them in their studio. Like a market, you're gonna see a sampling of their work and of course, purchase directly from them online. It's that easy. Because of the limited nature of their work and in many cases, the products offered on VAM are one of a kind or have limited availability. This means you'll wanna place your order fast to make sure you get the products you love. We will display each artisan's website at the bottom of the screen while they are with us. Plus, you can find their info on the Facebook Live event post. If you have any questions along the way, please leave them in the comments below, and we'll make sure that the artisan is asked those questions. Before we introduce our first artisan, I invite you to help us share the love. And I'm going to go off script for a minute here, and I just want to say this is a tough time for the artisan world. Most artisans derive their income from one of three ways. They do wholesale shows, they sell to stores directly, they do craft shows and uh, farmer's markets, and they have their own online presence. And so virtually every craft show is canceled. Stores are not necessarily buying a lot of product because they're just opening up and they're not sure what their you know, traffic is gonna be like. And so, it's been a little tough and a lot of these artisans derive their income solely from what they do. So we appreciate you being here. I, I'm just from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. And thank you for the support. And please feel free to share this with other people who might love quality, quality handcrafted products. So I'm gonna be so excited to tell you about our first artisan. This is just, he's just so amazing, and I'm the biggest fan of his. Imagine getting married at a beautiful lighthouse in Maine, and I'm going to read this right from the script. That magical experience gave Alan Claude the idea to create quality prints of the New England coast. Inspired by bold poster-style graphics from the 20s and 30s, mixed in with a little Edward Hopper, a heap of drama, and a teaspoon of serenity, the graphic art of Alan Claude calmly reflects the beauty of Maine and New England lighthouses. Get ready to experience stunning vintage retro art images of everyday moments on the coast. Oops. Hi. <laughs> well, uh, that's a little bit about me, what I do in, as a in a general sense. And um, like Lori said, I've been um, uh, doing lighthouse art for. Well, I got married at a lighthouse. My wife and I did, and uh, it's been uh, 
awesome to create art, be inspired to travel around New England and um, to view um, just the, the treasures of New England, really, and try to capture that on uh, as, as an art piece. So, um, and people seem to appreciate, I mean, it's all about memories, uh, what we want to do in, in life. And then you create memories by uh, visiting the coast of New England. <laughs> hey, Alan, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, somehow uh, Katie's vo Katie's picture got put up where I'm supposed to be. So I'm going <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, to. So. Katie, if you can fix that, I would just solely appreciate that. I don't know what happened, but I want to ask you a question. Like you have a, such a process in creating your artwork. Tell us what it's like to um, make your beautiful artwork. Um, well, I got a little quick, little short video. Do you want to share the screen again? Just. Yeah, I put the screen, uh, your video played, but I didn't hear any oh. sound. Did, did oh, you, you have didn't? Any, no. Do you want to try it again? Sure, of the of the the first commercial one, the first uh, overall view. Okay. Uh, yeah, where where all do you have uh, do you have sound on that? It, it should work. Um, um, I'm not sure why. Let's, let's try it out. Let's try it out. Do you hear it now? Can you hear it? No. Oh, okay. Bummer. I wonder why. Maybe if it's over here. Can you hear it? No? No, we can't okay. hear it. So maybe why don't you describe the process to us? Yeah, please. yeah, absolutely. Um, let me turn that off. Well, I go and take lots of pictures and um, and take lots of pictures and put together the idea like it's all about composition in the end so my photography is not really good so it's more of a uh a, a, a reference piece so um sometimes it's video too i just take my video camera and i just take if i see some boats out there or in this case i'll show you this if you could share my screen again here um this is oh my god are you on there okay so this is an Acadia last August. My kid was doing some schoolwork up there. So this is just people walking around. You know, I'm just, I'm like, oh, this is cute, you know. But see, that was just half a second, right? So that was my basis of my next, of my print. Now, I, I never, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just like, oh, I, I kind of like that was very sweet, those guys there, you know. And um, I don't usually stalk people either, but... Uh, <laughs> Let me show you um, my print of how I, so that came to, let's go over here. Okay, so I, I draw it on a big screen like this. You see, I have a, a giant iPad and it's a, basically a, a pen that creates whatever shape I want it to be, um, just like in here. Um, whoops, sorry, that. And here we go. Okay, so if I take a pen and I, I could just make shapes, whatever I want, I could close them up and then I could change the color. You know, I could, it's a, just like, you know, 160 years ago or 200 years ago, someone came up with a, well, more than that. A thousand years ago, somebody came up with a paintbrush. Um, I said, what are you doing? I'm taking horse hair and I'm putting it on a stick. And this allows me more control. I could do a lot more things than just with my fingers. Um, it's technology being used. So the computer is technology, just like a paintbrush was back in the day when that was a revolutionary thing. But it really allows you to change the shapes. Like, let's say if I, once I draw something, I could change the colors. Um, let's say I want it to be, um, you know, a black sky, or this is the other way. Okay, let's see. I wanted to change the color to another, you know, a darker blue. I could see that instantly. And when you do traditional painting, you're, you're kind of stuck. You kind of have to take a chance and that's it. So it just allows me to have more to be imperfect. So these are just pieces of, of shapes, you know, that I could change the colors and I put together kind of like a little puzzle sort of. 
and it just allows me to um, more freedom and I could this boat right here is grouped together and I could scale it I can make the layout smaller or the boat bigger you know I could zoom into this person here you know it just a it's just a neat way of working I was doing graphic design for many years and I just said I to myself, so I am an artist, and and I should be doing art, my own art, because as a graphic artist, you're working for other people, and you don't really always do could do your own um, creation. So you're kind of guided by other people. So anyway, took me two and a half years to do the first six lighthouses uh, of of Maine. Uh, that getting married at the lighthouse inspired me to create. Um, the lighthouse series and I'll just show you the first six right here so this piece these six lighthouses took me two and a half years to do I just wanted the lighthouse I, I love all those travel posters from 20s and 30s and I wanted to create my own version of that and uh, it took me another like three to six months to create my own lettering but um, it I you know I always encourage people to Take the time to create your craft and you know you're gonna spend they say 10,000 hours to create something great and um, the more you do the better you learn you know if you're always if you're trying to be honest with yourself don't let your ego get in the way and just try to be um, always trying to grow um, and so from there I just thought of like what people want as far as sizes what's a common shape for a frame. And then uh, I have a unique process where I laminate the art, just like a driver's license laminated. The art's protected, but it doesn't require glass. So glass breaks, but you know, it gets messy. So it's a, I have a nice way of framing things. Um, so it's really a combination of uh, technology and your human artistry that makes it so special, isn't it? Yeah, I think it, people are scared of technology, but just like a, the simplest way of saying it's like a paintbrush. That's technology. And, you know, were you afraid of a, a, a paintbrush, you know? Uh, I think it really could gives you, sometimes, um, you know, art takes a lot of patience. Anything takes a lot of patience. This gives you more of a, not a handicap, it just gives you more freedom to uh, mess up and correct. Um, I think a lot of people give up and say, well, I'm no good at this. You know, look, I just made this plop on the on paint on the, on the wall or canvas. And then you're stuck, you know, and then you remember that and that kind of makes it beat you down. But if you do it digitally, you could always change it around immediately. There's, you know, you could, um, you have that freedom of, of editing it. So. Would you want to take a moment and show us some images, some better images of your work, some close-up sure, images? Sure, sure. And One I just want to point out that this picture is not me. This is Katie Bryden. Katie is <laughs> <laughs> Katie is our behind the scenes person, and she's just wonderful. And she does all the um, the banners and such, and she's just great. But I have no idea how her picture got on where I'm supposed to be, and I'm not going to figure it out now. I'm just going to let Alan do his thing. So here you go, Alan. Okay. So um, let me uh, – can I switch my – okay, yeah. So this one right here – this is the image I was showing you earlier. And I made the picture and I added flowers, you know, uh, dandelions, and just, that was the result of that video I showed you earlier, you know? So you never know where you get your inspiration. Um, and my art is, uh, actually I'm fortunate to have the, uh, ooh, where is it at? Okay, yeah, Maine invites you. Actually, can I switch back to, uh, yeah, it made the cover of the main guide, the Bicentennial Guide, uh, and the official Adventure Guide of Maine and map. But unfortunately, because of COVID-19, probably not too many people will be seeing this, this magazine. But if you um, order online, um, and if it's a, we have a special going on, but um, you get a signed copy of that too. Uh, and there's a map too. So if you get a tiny little, thing under $20 you're not going to get this because it costs more money to ship this than the, the so anyways you'll see uh, the details but I like to include a free copy of it online too as well let me show you more art um, let's get back up here so my website is pretty straightforward um, I have uh, coasters too 
these coasters are great because they're water absorbent and um, they make great gifts. Prints of various sizes. I have very large size prints, 36 by 53. Um, let me show you this one right here. This is a new one. Big, you know, 36 by 53. We have free shipping. And I'll show you my calendar here. Can you switch back to the uh, screen? All right, let's go back to here then. Okay, there we go. So yeah, this is my 2021 calendar and all the images in here. They fit in frames like this. Um, it's like, you know, a lot of people put them in kitchens and things like this. And it's, uh, you could take a, a Sharpie and you could draw on it if you want to make any notes to any dates in the calendar year. And these are my prints. I have smaller eight by 10 prints as well. And these are like $24 uh, retail with free shipping. So, um, and some note cards as well. So I sell the wholesales to LL Bean and Stonewall kitchens and a lot of small little stores and at lighthouses too as well. And I sell online and, um, yeah, I love doing art shows because I miss the Clam Festival. That was such such a fun show to go to, and I miss the people, and I get ideas from the people too. And, and I know um, it's so hard as artisans. Hey, I'm back, by the way. Did you see? I, I, I found the right button, so I wasn't kidding when I said that this was going to be a bumpy ride. But um, yeah, as artisans, we like to we feed off the energy of people, and it's yeah. really hard for us today when we're sheltering at home. But what a great way to bring Maine inside! And a lot of people are staying home these days; they're not going out as much. And what mm -hmm. beautiful artistry to put on their walls! And uh, you have a few specials going on today for us, don't you? Yes. Uh, if you uh, buy something over twenty dollars, I'll include a free desk calendar for twenty twenty. This is what's uh, you know we got six more months left, and um, what else? Twenty percent of the sales actually goes to the Camden Library in Camden, Maine. It's a beautiful library. It needs a lot of help because of COVID. It's not you know it's. Uh, as so many other businesses have been uh, suffering because of this. Um, but I'm donating 20% of the sales. If you type in the coupon VAM, V-A-M, at checkout. Um, so you could help yourself and help someone else too. That's so generous. It's it's so it's like everybody wins when they put yeah. something. I mean, they get something. Uh, the libraries are suffering. They they're not getting people in. It's not going to be the same for them ever again. Well, and the Camden Library, if you've ever been to it, is just such a beautiful, beautiful area. Camden in general is beautiful, it, and it is. it's so generous for you as an artisan to support that. When we thank you for that. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun to be part of everything, and we. Well, my wife and I, we bought a couple of buildings in Gardner, Maine, and I'll show you a picture right here on my other screen here. Um, there, uh, this is my future gallery opening up next month. So if you're in the area um, in Gardner, that's near Augusta. I'll show you a little video here uh, of what it looks like right now. It's That's my work studio. That's where I'll be working on the third floor. Um, and the gallery is... Um, it, it, we still got a lot of work to do, but um, it's um, coming together. So, oops, turn that up. Well, Alan, thank you so much, and uh, thank you again. And remember, it's um, you can visit him on Facebook at alanclaude.com. And we thank you for being here. I'm a big fan thank of you. yours, and if thank anybody you, has ever been through the uh, Portland International Jet Port, they have – probably seen some of your artwork hanging right there on the walls. Thank you, Alan. Thank you so much, Lori, for having me on. Pleasure. Okay. Whew. I guess I wasn't kidding when I said it was going to be bumpy. Thank you all for your patience. Um, our next artisan, you will love her work. She is just so amazing. It's, I'm a big fan of hers. Um, from statement pieces to simple delicate pieces. This week's artisan Morgan Sayre of Morgan McGee and Designs has you covered. Morgan's passion for art 
started as a young child, but it wasn't until she went to the main college of art and took her first metal smithing and jewelry class that she knew she was destined to be a jewelry designer. Today, Morgan McGee and Designs creates pieces that are simple, yet elegant and perfect for all ages. Come learn how Morgan incorporates sea glass with other gemstones to give you a unique one of a kind look. Hi, Morgan. Lori. Hey, welcome. Hi, <laughs> we you. made it. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> pull up somebody else on, uh, by accident. So happy to have you, Morgan. I have been a fan of yours for just such a long time. You have such a unique look. Tell, tell us how that came about um, to, to get your signature look. I didn't want to do like my signature look on my pendants is I do this little curly Q veil at the top and um, I just didn't want to do something typical like a, a circle or something I wanted to change it up and that way people when they saw my work they could identify that it was mine um, and then I I really got into the sea glass just hanging out on the beach and looking around and finding some really cool pieces and now my son and I go out and we pick up pieces and we bring them home and then I go through the ones that I want to keep for jewelry um, and the ones that I don't use I have a throwback bag so I next time I go out I throw the sea glass back in and somebody else can find a little treasure. Um, I also use some semi-precious stones with my work to give the sea glass pieces like a, a natural and a polished look. Um, commonly I use like freshwater pearls. So this right here is one of my sailboat sea glass ne necklaces. I love the fact that you don't shape the glass. It's how you find it is what you put into your artwork. That makes it so special. Right. And it's, I, and it's really that you're throwing it back into the ocean if it doesn't right fit what you're looking for. So let's not keep everybody waiting. Let's show people what your art really looks like. I'm going to take myself off the screen and bring up your work. So these here are freshwater coin pearl earrings, and I should say all the metal I use is sterling silver. Um, I can work in gold if, if somebody requests it, um, but I recommend these earrings here to, they go with a lot of my sea glass um, jewelry designs because a lot of those have freshwater pearls with them, and it's very hard to find matching sea glass for earrings, so I tend to push the pearls. And this is that sailboat necklace I just showed you. It's two, two different shades of green. And this here is a, a Labradorite stone. Um, it's one of my favorites. It has a great blue-green flash in it. And then I work like a framing design around the stone. Just I like to focus on the beauty of the stones and not get too carried away with lots of frilly things around them. This here is another, I call it a piece of main necklace. Um, the top piece is a piece of pottery that I found on the beach. The middle piece is sea glass and the bottom is that freshwater coin pearl. This here is another sailboat necklace. Um, one of the sails, I don't think it's a piece of pottery. I'm thinking it's a piece of shell. It's really hard to tell. Almost looks like sea urchin. Um, and then the sea glass with the freshwater pearl at the bottom. And this one here is a aqua chalcedony. It's like a, a light mint green stone. And again, I did my framework around it where I, I stamped the edge and then I I etch out the inside to give it like a little scratch look around the stone. And this is another piece of main necklace, a rare piece of blue sea glass. You don't find a lot of that anymore. And a freshwater pearl. And I 
did some little swirls in between. And this stone here is called green argonite. And they're all different. They're like, they have different patterns in them. They all tend to be around the same color. Um, I just really love that stone and did the framework around it. And here is a necklace with a freshwater coin pearl. And this matches those earrings that I carry. And I should say, I, I carry the coin pearl earrings and necklaces all the time. They won't be exactly the same if, if you ordered multiple. Um, but yeah, they, I do the same design and that's part of my pearl line. What I love about these, Morgan, is that everything seems to be so one of a kind and so unique. I think that- I'm sorry, I can't hear you, Lori. Oh, sorry. I think that what I find so unique about your things- I still can't hear you. Am I There. I can hear you. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yep. I couldn't hear okay. anything. I hear your cat. That's what I'm hearing. Oh, <laughs> let her in. <laughs> <laughs> He's crying. <laughs> she wants to be on the show. One of the things that I love about your work is that every piece is truly unique. And if somebody wears one of your things, I'm sure that people come up to them and say, I know exactly where you purchased that. You got it from Morgan McGeehan. Right. Isn't that right? It, yeah, it's, it, I like it. It's, or if it has the curly Q thing, they, they know. Yeah, that. it's like you're a celebrity jeweler. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing I know that you also do um, custom work, isn't that correct? Yeah, um, a lot. Of I've had a lot of customers that have their own sea glass. That means a lot to them. Um, I had one customer come up to me and she told me she had been carrying this piece of sea glass in her purse for years. And she was in Hawaii um, spreading her mom's ashes on the beach. And she looked down and saw this little piece. And she's like, I want you to make me something for that memory. So I made her a pendant and it meant a lot to her. It was very sentimental. So I have a lot of customers that have that sentimental piece that they found that has oh, a story yeah. to it. Yeah. It, and it's a treasure. They'll wear it forever and love it. And so I also understand that you have a really amazing discount that you're offering. Yes. Um, right now I'm doing 30% off everything. Um, like you said earlier in the show, it's really tough right now. All our our craft fairs are canceled. Um, some of our shops are opening up that I sell to, but they're being cautious on ordering because you know they don't want to be sitting on stuff um, if they don't have any customers. Um, so I'm doing 30% off, and I'm also doing free shipping in the U.S. That's that's so generous of you. And again. Um, your work is just really stunning. It's one of a kind and people won't regret having a Morgan McGeehan piece. Thank you so much, Morgan. I appreciate you being here. Thank you, Lori. Okay. So, whew. all right. Our next artisan, I just met him yesterday. His name is James McLaughlin. So, James McLaughlin, outdoor meets street style in these stunning leather goods from 33 by hand. Based in Portland, Maine, James is the artist behind 33 by hand and he creates rugged, stylish pieces that thrive in the woods and on the street. He focuses on the craft of these items so that they will slip perfectly into daily life and remain solid favorites for lifetimes. Everything is done by hand in Maine. And get ready for everyone to ask you when they see you, where did you get that beautiful bag? Hey, James. Hey, how are you? Good, how's it going? Thanks for being here. Going well. Yeah, Tell absolutely, thanks for having me. Oh, so excited. Um, your work is beautiful. I can't wait to show people. Tell me, how did you, you get started working with leather? 
So leather in particular, um, I had been doing a number of textile things, um, doing some apparel stuff, kind of just making my own. Um, but leather had always been um, just something I've been drawn to as a kid um, growing up. Um, and I grew up in Central Maine in Skowhegan, and we have uh, in Heartland, which is just around the corner from me, um, a tannery called, uh, it's the, the company's called Tasman Leather Group, um, and they make some beautiful leather. And uh, we were able to go in there, and uh, we knew somebody that worked there, and so we could go in this massive floor uh, of all their off sales of all colors and styles and just pick any side of leather for Forty dollars each, which was crazy. So that kind of got um, it was a it was a great avenue to have access to all this amazing leather to work with. So uh, a friend of mine had started a little leather business, and I worked with her doing her branding and design. And uh, we both just kind of came up together and made our own brands uh, separately. So I just kind of took off with it, kept going. Oh, that's great. So. How did you come by the name 33 by hand? What does that mean? So uh, what it's come to mean is just um, representing your own your own personal style. Um, the thing about uh, the pieces that I make and a lot of, you know, style and fashion is it kind of it has to come from within you. And you, you see things that really they inspire you, but they help you express uh, your own creativity. Um, and 33. Uh, is when I, I was 33 when I started this brand as it is today. Um, and it was a big, very influential year for me. Um, and I was doing everything originally hand stitched. That's where originally the, the by hand came in. Um, however, it, it incorporated into making your own style on your own. Um, and I have been through a number of different kind of career paths and worlds in my life. And, um, you know, everything that got me to that point had been done, you know, by hand and on my own. So it was a culmination of where I was at the time and everything else in my life coming together to present this style that I wanted to run with. Now, you've lived in a variety of places, as we spoke yesterday. Yeah. I think you mentioned uh, Boston, Vancouver, L.A. Where have you found your most inspiration? You know, um, it's funny because I grew up in Maine. Um, my parents are not from Maine. They are, uh, my mom's from upstate New York. My dad's actually from West Virginia, but they had lived in New York City and Boston. So I grew up going to the city a lot as a kid, but also growing up here in Maine. Um, and all I wanted to do as soon as I graduated high school was get out of Maine and go live in a city. Um, so I did that for a long time. Um, so I found lots of inspiration from cities. Um, However, it's funny when I finally moved back here to Maine, um, it was always the place that I wanted to get out of because I wanted to find the big time, the big city. But in coming back here, I've realized that, you know, not only is this where I grew up, but it's just such a beautiful place and it's really kind of a special world that we have up here. So, you know, I think earlier in my life, I would have said I was inspired by city life. But at this point, I'm realizing that my main inspiration is really from here in Maine. Well, let's not keep our viewers waiting any longer. Are you ready to show us some of your amazing pieces? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, here we go. Uh, okay, so I guess we're on. I, I wasn't sure if you're going to put up pictures or not. So I have some stuff here, um, just starting small. Um, I have this. Uh, so this is my bifold wallet. Uh, I call it the Lakewood wallet, and it is a kind of classic bifold here with uh, a number of slots, bill slot, card slots here. Um, and this comes in a number of colors. Right now on the website, I have this rugged brown, and I have uh, the wonderful gray suede that's one of my favorites, and uh, a nice rich black. Um, also, so for Father's Day, that's a great one, of course. Um, I also have this, uh, this is called a valet tray. So this you kind of put on your counter or next to your bed and it keeps all your essentials, maybe jewelry, keys, wallet. Um, again, a great one for Father's Day or anyone really. Um, great for jewelry as well. So it could be for anyone. 
Uh, it looks like okay. So this uh, uh, this photo is um, of my Bayside tote, and um, I do primarily work in leather, but I also have developed this. Um, it's a heavy canvas that I coat with uh, exterior latex house paint. So it's extremely durable, flexible, gives you this waterproof finish, and it's a very leathery um, kind of feel to it. Um, my, the main thing that I, that I go for in my products is durability. And uh, developing this painted uh, canvas, it's become one of my kind of signatures, and it's extremely durable, and so I, I really like to use that. And then it has some leather accents there, too. Uh, this is my classic 33 tote. Um, the black one, uh, this particular one is the hand stitch version. Uh, like I said, I started doing all hand stitching. And um, hand stitched uh, stitching is, is highly durable. It takes a long time. But uh, unlike a machine stitch, if you clip any single stitch, uh, it won't just pull out. Each stitch is locked into each other. So it's really made. It's originally called a saddle stitch. So this is my original bag. This was kind of the first design that I ever came up with. Um, and I have both a hand stitch version, which is a little more expensive, uh, and a machine stitch version. This is my Fairview wallet, and this is my favorite. Um, this was, uh, I came up with the tote first, but this was my, really my first kind of signature product. Um, I carry one of these wallets every day. I'm kind of a minimalist when it comes to wallets. So as you can see, the diagonal um, piece there is, you can put some cards in there, and then it opens on the middle for some cards, and then the same diagonal pieces on the end. So really great for minimalists. Um, I like to carry just some cards, and I'm able to put a little cash in there if I need to. Um, and then it, the more things you put into this wallet, it kind of opens up and, uh, you know, forms to whatever you put in there. Uh, this is my Somerset Dot Kit. Um, and this is another one that I began making dot kits in kind of some different styles that I had kind of seen, but I really wanted... Um, the final, my final version of a dot kit to be uh, something unique. And so it took me a little while, but I developed this, uh, and I have this one actually right here, um, this uh, shape, which I really love. Um, some people, I mean, I call it a dot kit. I grew up calling it a dot kit, <laughs> but uh, also known as a shaving kit, toiletry bag. Um, and again, this is a great one for Father's Day. Uh, this is, so this right now is a special that I have, uh, and I'm going to be um, offering this camo bag um, more widely, but right now um, I have this one available uh, for a VAM special online. So if you go online today, you can find this up there. I'm going to have it up today, but um, it won't be back until late summer, so... Take advantage of that if you want to check it out. This is the it's a it's actually made from a material that's much like Sunbrella, which is um, a waterproof material that is used for a lot of outdoor um, furniture and things of that nature, which needs to be really rugged. So it's it won't fade and it's really waterproof and durable. Uh, this is my uh, bootstrap bracelet, and this is a classic. This is one, another one of the first things I came up with. So the tote, the Fairview wallet, and this bootstrap bracelet were my first items. Uh, I'm a big wristwear fan, so, you know, just having all kinds of different colors of bracelets to wear is always fun for me. So there's a nice picture of, that's again, the Lakewood wallet, which I showed at the beginning, uh, and that's the black version. And that's the valet tray in black. Great for all your, all your little positions. This is um, a newer item of mine. This is uh, the Kennebec Weekender. And again, this is using that painted canvas. So really durable, waterproof, wears in really nicely. Um, I mean, I love a weekender. Uh, I was really excited to get this product going and get it up on my site. Um, you know, this is the type of item that you buy and can have forever. Um, great for travel, detachable shoulder strap, so you can have it as a, 
a carry on with your just uh, in your hand or attach that shoulder strap if you want a little more functionality. Well, thank you. Those look amazing. That last bag, we have a question on, will that fit under like um, an airline seat or in, in the overhead for carry-ons? The weekender? Yes. Yeah, for sure. It, I mean, I guess it depends on how much you put in it. But, um, but yeah, it'll definitely fit up top for sure. As far as under the seat, you know, I mean, again, it depends on how much you got in there. You could, you could get it under there though. But yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely made to fit in an overhead compartment for sure. Yeah, uh, my, my husband has this theory that there's two kinds of luggage, um, carry on and lost. So I've always <laughs> been a big carry on fan. So yeah, I too. just love and just to have a bag that you can have for the rest of your life and just never have to worry about buying another one. And I'm sure it just gets better looking, you know, as you have as you as it wears. Yeah, and that's that's one of my favorite things about leather. Um, and what I've tried to kind of develop with that painted canvas is um, just like you said, a material that, you know, the more you use it, the more it becomes unique and it has that worn and feel. I mean, everybody knows, you know, if you have a, any piece of leather that um, you carry over time, it just it develops a nice patina. It becomes really your own. And uh, yeah, so yeah. Just it's like, like it's like the marks and blemishes that happen along the way is like just part of your history. Totally. And they yeah. tell the story of all your trips and everything. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And so um, you're running a special, aren't you? You have some one of a kind pieces that you're offering up for the van I fans. Do. So, that, so that camo bag um, is right now one of one. I also have this bag, which I put on the website. And this is a, let me stand up here and show you. So this is a, a large uh, tote, similar to the Bayside tote, um, but it's a little bit unique in that it has um, this leather strip all the way around the top and also on the inside. And this is this very light blue with, um, so I'm also uh, a big sneaker fan uh, and I grew up uh, wearing Jordans and watching Jordan play. So this, this uh, red, pinky color is called infrared and it's come it comes from uh originally the jordan six um so that is uh kind of a little cool detail for sneaker fans and then on the inside it's got some cool splatter on the inside too and both the camel bag and this tote are up today and they'll be up today for uh special for the van market um the camel bag will be returning again but but for now, it's just uh, up today. I also have 15% uh, off, and uh, you can use the code VAMFAM, so V-A-M-F-A-M, uh, and that'll be up for today. And I'll leave it up for tomorrow, too, so for the whole weekend, so 15% off. Um, I also am going to be donating 25% uh, of all the money I make this weekend um, to the, um, women, the Black Women's Wellness Foundation, um, which is a really important foundation for me um not only in the times that we're in but just in general i think um you know we in america really need to to show our black community some love here and of course our women community um i've been very lucky to grow up with some strong black women in my life and they've been really influential to me so it's a foundation that's really important to me I think artisans are probably one of the most generous uh, groups of people. And thank you so much for offering that. And I totally agree with you. Um, it's real, really, it's very commendable. Thank you, James. Thank you. All right. So let's see. Our last artisan back by popular demand. <laughs> I'm going to pull her up right now. <laughs> Just so excited <laughs> to be invited back, guys. Oh, Sarah from witchydecor.com. Sarah has these amazing candles, and they are like the finest products of the finest products. Sarah, tell us about your candle. Tell us about them. Sure. Thank you so much, first of all, for having me back. I'm so excited, um, especially in these quarantine times. It's nice to feel like I have someone to talk to instead of these plants. So I wanted to start with explaining a little bit about the process behind the candles, how I got started, and the ingredients that I use. So I got started making candles because I could not find a product that matched what I wanted. 
Um, if I found a scent that I liked, I didn't enjoy the products. I didn't like the way that the burn would go. I didn't, I had a lot of issues with it. So that's how I started making my own. And along with that came the desire to make scents that I felt like weren't represented traditionally in a marketplace. So that's how we got to a lot of the fragrances that I came to. The other thing that I love is naming my candles. And I may have mentioned that in my previous appearance, but I think that that is the best part of being an artist is the creative touches that you can add, even when you're trying to make something that has a little bit more of a mass appeal or that you're trying to make it a little bit more of a production mode. So the other thing that I think is really critical with the candles is making something that is very safe. And I started making these, gosh, the first few times was a long time ago, but once I started getting into a wider production, I wanted to make sure that I had something that was safe. And I was pregnant with my second child at the time. And my first child was about two and would often help me out. We were doing this in our kitchen. So what we would do is work with really high quality soy wax. And the great part about soy wax is several options. The first great part is that soy wax is a renewable resource. It comes from plants. It is not a petroleum product. And while there's nothing wrong with that, petroleum products are oil-based and the oils are from the earth and it's not renewable. And maybe in a hundred million years, but it hopefully will not be alive then. The other thing that to me was really important was fragrance oils that were non-toxic and not just non-toxic, but really high quality. And I wanted to make sure that I had something that I could be breathing in while pregnant with the two-year-old next to me that would not be harmful in any way. And I don't know if you can see behind me here, but I'm actually burning one of my candles right now. And you can see, I'm sure, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but you won't see any soot. You won't see any black smoke. You won't see any of those weird curly cues you'll sometimes see. Um, sometimes in a beeswax candle, you can get some really beautiful smoke that poofs off. And that's because of the way that the beeswax smokes. It's beautiful. Beeswax candles are wonderful, but they don't carry scent really well. The other thing that we had to sort of contend with through the experimental phase of the candle making process was the need for essential oils, the use of essential oils. And boy, did we try. We tried and we tried, but essential oils have a very low flash point. And a flash point is when heat upsets the process of the oil and takes away its fragrance abilities. So we tried with the essential oils. Most of them have a flash point of around 100 degrees. And the wax that we use typically gets to about 180 to 190 degrees when we add our fragrances. So that doesn't always work and it doesn't carry the scent and it can really drive up the cost because the quantities that you have to use to have a scent carry in your wax, it's only going to be really effective when it isn't burning. And the bigger issue too is again, your quality. Essential oils always seem as though they're an excellent quality, but there are a lot of quality issues within essential oils. You can pay a lot for really high quality or sometimes you end up just paying a lot for not the best quality. So what we do is we really make sure that we research the types of oils that we purchase and that we use. And that research process involves an international association that certifies fragrances. And that's called the IFRA. And that's the International Fragrance Research Association. And that's a group that certifies fragrance oils for quality, for consistency, for safety. And that's the only types of oils we use. I won't buy anything that isn't certified by the IFRA. I also make sure I use a really good quality wick. Um, a lot of times the distributors that I deal with will sort of switch things out. And if I notice a change in quality, I will switch because I don't want to have something that I'm not proud to stand behind. The other thing too that I think is really cool is these containers also reusable. So people ask me, what do I do with these containers once I'm done? I actually have a little section on my website where you can go and you can see some of the things that I've done in the past with extra containers. These are great, these little tins. I'll hold one of those up so you can see it. They're a six ounce tin and they're really cool. They hold a nice candle, but if you're done with your candle, you wanna reuse it, you could stick a magnet on it, pop it up on the wall and it can become a little container that's easily accessible that way. The other thing that's really fun with them is they're really great for starting seeds, little seedlings, paper clips. Um, I actually sometimes use these to hold my daughter's little hair barrettes because then I don't lose them, which is nice because those things are tiny. 
the jars, I actually like to use the jars a lot to hold um, my makeup brushes because gosh, I do not look like this when I wake up. There's a lot of makeup up there, but you need a lot of nice brushes. So I use these for my makeup brushes. I will also reuse them a lot in the kitchen and just store spices in them, things like that. You can run either of these containers through the dishwasher once after they're empty to make sure they're really good and cleaned out. Because it's soy wax, because the melt point is so low, don't do it all the time, but you can put them through the dishwasher. They won't get wax on your other dishes. They won't clog up your dishwasher. I would not do this every night. Once in a while, not a big deal. That's what we do at our house. So the other thing I wanted to talk about was summer is coming. Now remember, we're in Maine, so our seasons are always about a month behind the rest of the country, if not more. Because it is summer, because summer is such a beautiful time to be in Maine, but same for the bugs. We are doing a special citronella candle this summer. It's a citrus citronella. It's not the traditional lemony citronella. I know everybody sort of has that mindset of a very heavy 80s citronella in that bright yellow bin. And it works, but it's kind of stinky. This is a much lighter, brighter, um, almost more of an orangey undertone. So it doesn't have that sharpness that can come from that lemon citrus. I think it's a really great scent. The other scent that we're doing for summer, we've got two, which is here brunch. And you can take a look at this container. Sorry about the lighting. This is one of our most popular scents. We brought it back from last summer. This is a great scent. It is citrus, champagne, Ozone, ozone is my secret code word for like bubbly air. There's two different words you'll see. And that just sort of means a bright bubbly fresh air scent. Um, ginger, green leaves, coconut, amber, vanilla, and wood. I don't like vanilla. Don't usually use it in my candles, but there's such a light scent on these that it really just rounds out the citrus to give it a really bright fragrance without being too heavy or too fruity. So when you mix the right combinations, they really offset each other in a nice way, I think. I like to think of it as um, creating an image with a candle because I can't paint, but I wish I could. So instead I make candles. So this is Oh, it's so nice. It's just this really bright, fun, like summery scent. This reminds me of back when you could go out and have like cocktails with your girlfriends on a Sunday morning and maybe eat a couple of bowls of eggs or plates of eggs because you had too much to drink the night before, but you need a little hair of the dog. That's what this is. The other one that we're going to be featuring this summer, it's a brand new one and it is a pop tail. So I don't know if you guys know what pop tails are, but pop tails are this fantastic invention of, again, Bless those moms who are staying at home trying to stay sane. A pop tail is a cocktail that's frozen into a popsicle. So this uh, other new summer scent is a pop tail inspired and it's elderflower and spritz pop tail. So it's got just these little notes of floral. I don't typically do a floral, but I thought this was such a neat scent. I wanted to do something a little bit different. So it's a little bit of a floral. And then also within the floral, you'll have a little bit of that effervescence that comes from a nice champagne cocktail. And it's just this really bright, fun, summery, floral, drinky yumness. Like when you go to a bar and get a specialty cocktail and sometimes they'll throw in some really nice fresh ingredients like a mint or some lavender or any of those types of things, this is kind of what that would represent. And then that covers, so that's our three summer scents. So that's our pop tail, that's our citrus, citronella, and witches who brunch. Apparently I'm going for a real citrus theme this summer. Who knew? But I also wanted to cover a few of our, um, I refer to them as our boozy candles. We have three scents that are always on that are part of our boozy collection. One of them is our Aunt Babs Gin and Tonic. And you can see it here is again, I have not mastered the art of showing a candle in sunlight, but this is a really fun scent that is a really light, but really true gin and tonic scent. And it is lovingly named after my Aunt Barbara, who is the master of the gin and tonics, always has a lime with her. I don't know about the other ingredients, but I know there's always a lime nearby. And this is a really fun fragrance. And just as a reminder too, our tins typically burn for at least 13 hours, but I usually get about 16. This is another one also inspired by the same beloved side of my family called Your Drunk Grandma. And this is a bourbon apple maple. And my grandmother before she passed was a real big bourbon drinker. Um, and the combination of the fragrances here reminded me of sort of a grandmother making an apple pie 
after she's had a few too many. And so that's what I really enjoy. Um, this is a very popular scent. It's a really fun smell. It's one of our fall-ish scents, I guess. I think whenever you throw an apple, people think of fall, but honestly, it's not heavy, so it really works all year round. And like I said, if you wanted to just take a quick peek, oh, this is actually a super great fragrance that I love. This is grapefruit and mint. This is one I burn all year round. This is one I burn in the kitchen. And actually anywhere that gets a little musty or stuffy, this cuts right through it. So if you've got a bedroom closet, you can even leave this in there with the cap off without it burning and it will still take some of that heavy stink out of the air. But again, you can see this, this just burning nice and pretty as I try to figure out how cameras work. There you go. It is burning, I swear. There's fire in there. Um, and that's kind of where I'm at right now. So Lori, do you have any questions? Oh, Sarah, I just love your <laughs> candles. And I, always, I think candles just make your home seem so much fresher. Yes, I agree. It, it almost like I, I burn them in my studio and it kind of gives me inspiration and it just makes me feel a little bit more Zen like, you know, it's just so yeah. nice. And it's nice not to have those candles that have all that black smoke, because I remember once I used to burn a lot of candles and ended up ended up having to repaint my living room yes. because everything was soot covered. Well, and that's the problem with the parabens is they're really thick. And because they are an oil-based product, they can stick to your walls. And God help you if you have wallpaper. Yeah. And then breathing it in is just horrible. Yeah. So. I don't, I try not to think about that part, but yes, I can't imagine what it does to the inside. <laughs> yeah, I, I can only, you seem like mo, like you know, half artisan, half chemist, the way you, that you're talking about your, yes. your, your work. So just such a fan of yours. Thank you so much for being back by design. Sure. By popular demand. Are you offering any specials this weekend? Yes. So because the last van went so well, I'm actually extending that coupon and we're running it for longer. So this time we're going to be doing a discount code on the website and the discount code is VAMFAN. That's V-A-M-F-A-N. And that sale is 20% off your entire purchase. And that's running until the end of Father's Day, 1159 p.m. Eastern Father's Day. So that is a full eight days. That's great. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much. So that is wrapping up our show. I want to thank everybody for being here. I'm going to bring in the rest of our crew, Alan and Morgan and James. Is that everybody? That's everybody. Okay. I want to thank you guys so much. You guys are wonderful. Um, I think people got a great idea of that it's not just a little product. It's a lot of research. It's a lot of love and it's a lot of, sorry, I can't hear Lori. So, all right. Um, I don't know why, but I'm just going to say bye everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you guys. Thanks so much. Have a great weekend, everyone. Oh.